After nearly 300 years of colonial rule, Portugal withdraws from East Timor, sparking a bitter rivalry between local groups. Goes into action. After months of chaos, Fretilin forces declare East Timor independent in November 1975. Nine days later, Indonesia invades. As the world largely looks the other way, tens of thousands of East Timorese will die. Australia's Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser is the first to recognise Jakarta's de facto annexation, but the UN condemns it and calls for an act of self-determination. Despite staged visits like this one, Indonesia's President Suharto oversees a brutal regime of occupation. Away from the official cameras, fighting, massacres, torture and starvation kill as many as 200,000 people over the next two decades. In 1991, shocking footage emerges of the Santa Cruz massacre. A hundred people slaughtered at a funeral procession in the capital. It's a rare glimpse into the occupation. Resistance fighters like Janana Guzmao, who had taken to the mountains, are decimated. His capture in 1992 is a crushing blow. Over the next few years, atrocities continue to mount, but so does the groundswell for independence. When the Nobel Peace Prize was awarded to the country's de facto foreign minister, José Ramos Horta, along with East Timor's Catholic bishop, it put the country back on the international radar. Then, in 1998, a political earthquake hit Indonesia. Massive street protests saw President Suharto resign after more than 30 years in power. His replacement, President Habibi, is open to autonomy for East Timor. For the first time, there are glimmers of hope. Habibi releases Janana from prison, and international pressure for a referendum for East Timor grows. On August 30th, 1999, the UN oversees an historic ballot. 78% of East Timorese vote for independence. The people of East Timor have thus rejected the proposed special autonomy and expressed their wish to be in a process of transition towards independence. But celebrations are short-lived and Jakarta's response is swift and brutal. Indonesian-backed militias that terrorised people before the vote step up their attacks. They're aided by Indonesian security forces. Thousands are detained or killed in a three-week campaign of terror. Hundreds of thousands are displaced, many shipped over the border to Indonesian West Timor. An Australian-led peacekeeping force arrives in late September, but the damage has already been done. Perpetrators are arrested, but towns and villages are decimated. Electricity supplies destroyed, and infrastructure is in ruins. Janana returns as the hero of the nation, and the UN governs for three years before he's elected president of the newly named Timor-Leste. But Janana and his fellow revolutionaries inherit the massive task of rebuilding their new, old country. In the years that followed the referendum, this has proved a massive challenge, despite relative political stability. One potential way forward is to unlock the country's massive oil and gas reserves, but that's been embroiled in an ugly maritime dispute with Australia. For a long-suffering people, the road ahead may yet prove as hard as the battle for freedom itself.